Hey guys, it's Vandy Ezel, back at another Card Fight Vanguard Tech Profile. So hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and donate to the Patreon. So let's get started. This time, it's my Mech Colony Venom Stinger deck. So, I've seen many builds of this. Some of them are used with Gredora. Some of them have it used with Gunning Kilo. Some of them, very few of them actually have it fused with, mu ah, with machining. And some of them which is weird, have all four combined, which I greatly question. And then there are the few that have Venom Stinger on its own. I am, along with those few, are building a deck with only Venom Stinger as the focus. Yes, there are other grade threes. I'm not that stupid. I'm not going to just run one grade three at four copies and just say screw it. I have done that in the past with very certain decks that we do not discuss the topic of. But um, <laughs> this is... My Venom Stinger deck, it is decently good. It has lost a few fights, mainly because I'm an idiot and I was stupid with it. But uh, let's get this started. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and donate to the Patreon. Now let's get started. First up, the starter. Youthful Mutant Dorticus. 6k base, 10k shield. Auto, when wrote upon, draw a card. And then if your opponent's vanguards are greater one or greater, put a quick shield ticket into your hand. The quick shield to the 5k shield, and you get to draw a card. So, you know... It's really helpful. The draw helps you top deck. The quick shield ticket is mainly discard fodder. There are times where you use it as a 5k in the early game. Basically how I see it, it's this. Is if you don't use the quick shield by your opponent's grade 2 turn, then, I mean grade 3 turn, first grade 3 turn, it's most likely going to be discard fodder if you already haven't discarded it. Because some people would discard it for the early search effect. I will keep it around for one turn and then discard it the following turn and just keep it in my hand for discard fodder. So either way, it's a helpful card because it saves up hand, so decent. Now, there are four draw triggers of Paralyzed Madonna because who doesn't like PGs and who doesn't like draw triggers? This deck does need the draws. It helps you cycle out the things that you need to see in your very certain combo that... It's very questionable, but it does work in the end, so it works. Uh, four copies of it. Then we have eight crit, because we don't need too many draws. You don't want to get too cluttered with the draws. It would be like a filling in a cake, where you don't want too much filling. You just want a little filling. And we got four heals. Because you, unless you're playing Valkyrion in a very certain way, or Nuzio, there is no excuse to not run heals. Unless you're a budget player, but at that point I question, how did you afford the draw PG, but you didn't afford the heals? You ask yourself that. If you buy this deck, but you get the draw PG over the heals, ask yourself that. Why do you bought the draw PG over the heals? Now onto the grade ones. Three copies of New Face Mutant, Little Dorcas, AK base, 10k shield, he continuous vanguard, a rear guard. During your turn, if your opponent has no standing units, this unit gets plus 5k power. So, you know, it's a 13k base if your opponent has nothing standing. More, or like, about half the people I see play card games, they, or Vanguard in general, even if the attack won't hit, they'll still swing at it for a poke. Not even just to get off effects, just to swing for swing. I mean, I know I do it. Even if, the, if there's no effect that goes off, even if I know it won't hit, I'll swing for the sake of swinging. And some people do it, some people don't. In the cases where you fight against people who do, I mean, most of the time they rest their field anyways. But in the off case that you fight the people who do, this is a permanent plus five. And the chance that you fight the people who don't, well, it loses out on the plus five, but it's fine. Because the main reason why it's here is auto vanguard or rear guard. When placed from hand, look at top five, reveal to one grade three from among them, put it into your hand, shuffle your deck, and if you put a card, you gotta discard one. So you do have to minus to plus. But. There are 10 grade 3s in this deck. The chances of you seeing the grade 3 you want are decent. They're about, like, if I were to give a number, 45% chance? Someone do the math. There's 10 grade 3s, and I know 4 of them are the ace grade 3, so not really good percentages on my side, but I'm pretty sure it's 45. But it gives you a search, and it's a grade 3 that is of great importance to you, or it can be used in the combo, because I'm telling you right now, all those, all the great threes in the deck, they are needed for this combo. They all need to be present at the same time, not at different points in time. I mean, they can, but it won't be as good as a combo. They need to be on the board at the same time. So this thing really helps you. Three copies. 
four copies of Stealth Millipede. 7k base, 10k shield, uh, I mean, continuous bang, continuous rear guard. If this unit is rest, all of your opponent's rear guards in the same column as it cannot stand. This thing is a blessing because if it's rested, nothing will stand. You can have three of these in the back row, and as long as it's rested, your whole your, all of your opponent's back row is rested, so if they cannot stand, making their back row useless. And the other effect, which I kind of hate and I kind of love at the same time, Auto rear, when it's attack or the attack it boosted hits, put this unit to your soul and counter charge one. It is mandatory. It does not matter if you want to. Because it doesn't have a cost. Now, if next to the put to soul part, it said cost and then put it in brackets, then yes, then it wouldn't be mandatory because it has a cost. But it doesn't have a cost. It is required whether you want to or not. Which sucks. Because that means you can't stop the opponent's rear guards from standing. But at the same time, it adds hit pressure. And that's what I love. If you know me personally, I love forcing opponents to either guard something that they should really be taking. Or force them to take something that honestly would benefit me more. I love doing that to people. Where I'll make it so that no matter what, I'm getting a win out of it and they don't. <laughs> Because if they block it, then they can't stand their back row. If they take it, yeah, they get to stand their back row, but I'm getting soul and I'm countercharging. So either way, I'm winning this. It just doesn't matter. It's just a difference of do they want to stand their back row or not. Four copies. And then four copies of Mutant Gentleman. High class moth. 8k base, act, rear guard, and two skills, 10k shield. Continuous deck or soul. It is regarded as a grade 3. Act rear guard circle. Run, rest this unit and put a normal unit from your drop zone on the bottom of your deck. Counter charge one. Choose one of your opponent's rear guards and it cannot intercept till end of turn. And this ability may only use, be used once per turn by a card with the same name. And that is a very important ability. Because the deck end and soul in, as a grade 3, that is very important. In this get yeah, in this deck, yes, you have ten grade threes. Yes, you have three copies of a searcher. But it is not a guarantee that you will see a grade three. Two of your two of your grade threes require you to have a grade three in soul for their full effects to go off. Ride this at grade one. I promise you, you will succeed in the long run if you ride this at grade one. I do not care if you have if you have such an amazing plan set up for next turn that like you can do loops, combos with, etc. Or like you really need that counter charge and you're going to need in the future. Write this at grade one. You will not regret it. I promise you, it will come back to save you. What I should have done when I was first pl test playing this deck is write it at grade one. But no, I valued counter charging over being smart and then got my ass kicked where I really needed a grade three in soul and I couldn't because I didn't. Couldn't use a skill because I didn't have a grade 3 in soul. But if I wrote this, I would have had a grade 3 in soul. Remember, ride this. But also, you get to counter charge and possibly put a card back in deck. Like, say, for example, you're out of draws, you're at two deck cards, and you can kill your opponent this turn guaranteedly, but you need three attacks. And you can't attack with your Vanguard because the second you attack, you'll lose your last two deck cards via Twin Drive and you'll lose the game. You can use this thing's effect to send something to bottom. Granted, it won't be a trigger, but it's still a normal unit. And now you'll be at three deck cards, so now you can do all three attacks and kill your opponent. Very simple, four copies. I also like his art. I used to hate his art, now I like it. Now into grade twos. Four copies of Spear Attack Mutant Mega Lara Lancer. 9k base, 5k shield, auto rear guard. When it attacks a vanguard, this unit gets plus 2k power to end a battle for each of your opponent's rested rear guards. Then put a rear guard into your soul, and your opponent cannot intercept until end of turn. That is a helpful ability because one, on attack, but gets plus two. Most likely for each of your opponent's rest rear guards. Most likely they have at least one in the front row or somewhere on the board, so it gets plus two, even if they break. Most times when people break, they normally call something to the back center at the very least. Even if it's a trigger, they'll still call a trigger just to get a boost out of it. So you're still getting plus two K and it can possibly get stronger. Then you can shove a rear guard soul and you can nullify interceptors, which can be helpful if, like it's the final turn, your opponent only has interceptors left, you can just stop them from intercepting. So, four copies. It also gets you soul, which is real useful when you need to put this thing to soul. Use this 
to shove this into Seoul. I promise you, you will not regret that. Regard as a grade three insult thing. You need it. Do not get overconfident that, oh yeah, I got this great one turn combo or two turn combo that would definitely kill someone. Make sure you set up between these two. There is a reason why both of them are at four. They need to be on the field for this to work. And now to the other grade twos. Four copies of Nasty Smog, 9k base, continuous rear guard circle. All your opponents in the all your opponents rear guards in the same column. All your opponents units in the same column as it cannot intercept. That is useful. It that was weird. It locks down intercepts. I mean, a lot of as and this does a lot against alt miles because alt miles can intercept from the back row thanks to Starlight Violinist and they can possibly get extra shield. What does this say? No, but what? They can still intercept from the back row. Guess what? I'm going to tell you this fun little combo that my friend keeps pulling on me, which I really, really, really hate. You can call three nasty smugs to your back row. So you know, unless your opponent's playing Kagero, Narukami, or anything that can murder stuff from the back row, or bind them for that matter, you cannot stop. You can't stop it, and your opponent can't stand or intercept from their back row. So basically you call three to the back row, your opponent can't intercept from anywhere, so all miles get shut down. And then the second ability, all your opponent's rear guards in the back row of the same column cannot stand during his or her stand phase. Which means you got all these in the back row, no one can intercept, and they can't stand. Yeah, this thing's very annoying to deal with. If your opponent calls this to a rear guard in the back row, murder it. Do not let it do not let it stay longer than it has to. Murder it the second you get the chance. It will free up your board. But when you are using this, call it down. Do not call it to the front. It makes it an easy target. Just call it to the back row. Force your opponent to waste counter blast or soul blast on it. And your opponent is going to be either locked down or they're wasting resources to get rid of something that honestly doesn't really make too much of a difference at the start of it. Still four copies. And then four copies of Bloody Hercules. 9k base, 5k shield, auto rearguard circle when placed. Soul Blast 1 in this unit gets plus 6k power till end of turn. And then auto vanguard or rearguard. When its attack hits, counter charge 1 and one of your units gets plus 6k power till end of turn. You may be wondering, why are there three different counter chargers all at four? Here's why. Just because you have two different counter chargers doesn't mean you're going to see them. I have played games where I run two different counter charges at four, and I don't see either of them during the game except for one copy of one of them, and I can't even use its counter charging skill because I don't meet the requirements. In those games, I still win. Some of them I win, some of them I lose, because I either know how to counter blast correctly, or I die because I wasted a counter blast assuming that I was going to get a counter charger out of it. So, always be prepared with multiple counter chargers just in case you don't see the one that you want or need, at least you see something that will give you what you need, countercharging. And, you know, it gives you plus power, too. It can already become a 15k base. This deck has no soul problem whatsoever. And it can get a, another unit 6k base. So, really helpful. Four copies. And now into the 10 grade threes. Two copies of Death Warden Antlion. A protect gift, 12k base, auto vanguard or rear guard. When it attacks... Anything. Doesn't matter if it's a Vanguard. You should attack it with the Vanguard, but point stands. Soul Blast 1 Grade 3 and discard 2 cards from hand. And until end of battle, this unit gets plus 10k power and 1 crit, and your opponent cannot guard with Sentinels from their hand. To Guard Circle. That is extremely useful. Because in this combo, this thing can attack twice. If you play it right, and I'm saying this is a big if, if you play the combo right... You can get this ability off twice. It is very useful because you can abuse it. You can get extra crits out of it. You can get extra power out of it two times on your first grade three turn. I want to make sure this is heard. First grade three turn, you can swing with this twice on a rear guard for double crit both times with plus 10k for both times. Possibly more, depending on if triggers are involved or not. That is extremely helpful, because it locks down your opponent's hand, forces them to guard more, because who wants to take an extra crit attack unless you really need that counter blast, 
and it can possibly force your opponent up to 6 damage on your first grade 3 turn. I cannot stress this enough, and this combo is really easy to pull off. All you need is all 3 grade 3s. You need 1 grade 1, that being the Moth uh, Gentleman, and the 1 grade 2 Mega Lancer. If you have all 5, you can abuse this combo and your opponent will most likely die, or if they don't, they're going to die within the next turn. So two copies, really helpful. And it's also like a late game finisher. And if you have to ride it, it's not the end of the world. Remember, ride Moth first. It will never, you will never regret it as long as you ride Moth first. And on to the other grade three. Four copies of Pincer Attack Mutant Intrude Scissors. I don't know why I almost called it a Lancer. 12k base, he also has a Protect Gift, but he is objectively the worst grade three out of all of them because he has no Vanguard skills. If you ride this, you wrote it because you didn't have a choice. But if this is in your hand, take my advice and do the following statement. Guard with it. I do not care if the attack would still hit. Guard with this. Put it in your drop zone. G assist. I've done it multiple times. More than half the times it pays out. I am not joking. That is a genuine statement. And you can even ask Wandering Mandala because I do it to him constantly. And he can even vouch for me that I'm telling the truth on this. And... His skills, auto drop zone at the end of the battle that your grade 3 or greater vanguard attack. If a new card is put into your opponent's damage zone during this turn, counter blast one and call his card to rear guard. Then, auto rear guard circle. When placed, soul blast one, choose one of your rear guards, stand in and gets plus 10k power to end of turn. So, you may be wondering, how are you going to be able to abuse that counter blast one to call it to rear guard when most of the time your opponent's going to guard everything so that this thing cannot? call itself back and more importantly how are you going to get it in drop zone to begin with when you're not supposed to ride it or normally guard with it here's how four copies of worm toxin mutant venom stinger 12k base protect gift i also used to hate his art as well and now i love it um two skills auto vanguard circle auto i want to let this be clear this is an auto ability you would think this is a continuous but it's not when a card is put into your opponent's damage zone during your turn this unit gets plus 10k power to the end of turn. On a normal case, that would be a continuous ability where it would only activate once. This is not a normal case because it activates multiple times. God forbid it, but if you play this combo right that I've been talking about for like the last two minutes or so, if you play it right and your opponent just takes everything for some bizarre reason, they would go to three damage in one go, bringing them all the way up to three, hopefully, and this gives plus 30. So it's already at 42. For ungodly reasons, if they go to 3 from this, or assuming that they haven't taken any damage and they just take these, it would go to 42. Then, it's other skill. Auto Vanguard Circle. When it attacks, counter blast 1 and put a rear guard into your soul until end of that battle. Even if a trigger unit is revealed by your opponent's damage check, that trigger effect does not activate, and you perform the same trigger effect as that card's trigger effect. Then, Soul Blast 1, Grade 3. Choose up to 2 cards from your draw... From your opponent's damage zone and put them into their drop zone and deal one damage to your opponent for each um for each card put into your, their dro drop zone that is helpful because you can take their two damage heal them for them and deal them two more it is both slightly decking them out not much but still slightly and you can take their trigger effects which is really helpful say they damage check a crit and a heal if you can meet the heal requirement you get to heal and you get to activate the crit. So that's really helpful. So technically, you have four drive checks. But then you may be wondering, what is this entire combo I'm talking about? Here's what you need to do. Ride Venom Stinger. Okay, protect one or protect two. It doesn't really matter. Call this to the back row. It does not matter which back row it is. Preferably the back center. But call this to the back row. Then call this to the front row. Does not matter where on the front row. Just call it. Then call Mega Lancer to the other front row circle. And then call High Class Moth to the circle behind Antline. Here's what you do for this combo to work. You first attack with Antline, boosted by High Class Moth, using the skill of Antline to hopefully Soul Blast the High Class Moth that you rode earlier in the game. And gives plus 10k power, plus 1 crit, then it gets the 8 from the boost, hitting for 20, 30 with double crit. Your opponent will most likely either guard it or take it. Well, that's actually their only option, so I don't know, so sure why I said most likely. And what will end up happening after that, you swing with Mega Lancer. Doesn't matter if they have intercepts or not. What you need to do is shove that high class Moth to Soul. Doesn't matter if they have interceptors, just do it. 
Even if the attack just whiffs, just do it because you won't regret this. After you shove the high class moth to soul, attack with Venom Stinger. Use Venom Stinger skill, counter blast, shove this to soul, then soul blast this, heal two damage on your opponent, they damage check whatever, hopefully some triggers, then you do your drive check, whether the attack hit or not, and you got triggers or not, you use this thing skill to counter blast one, call it from drop on top of the rested Mega Alar Lancer, then you use his on play skill to soul blast one, do not soul blast the moth, plus 10 to the ant line and restand it, and then you get to attack with the ant line again. This time it doesn't have a booster, but you get to soul blast that moth that you put into your soul earlier via Mega Alar Lancer's effect, and gets plus 10k power and a critical. Yes, I'm aware of how long that combo was, but it is inherently worth it because at the first grade three turn, you're getting five attacks and normally five attacks. That, that doesn't sound like much. Like Aqua Force can do that in its sleep. Uh, Great Nature can do that um, to some form of an extent. Narukami can kind of do that. And what was the other deck that can do that? Seven Seas could technically possibly do it if your opponent let you. And what was that last deck that can do that? Um, drawing a blank what the last deck can do that is. Point is, a lot of decks can do that. But you may be wondering, why does that make this deck special then? Because two of those attacks are coming in at extra crits. This is a total of four, five, six, seven damage. Technically nine if you count the ability that Scissor gives. So you're dealing your opponent roughly nine damage. That being said, if they take all of it. Point is, you're putting your opponent in a very certain position where they got to throw down a lot of cards to guard. You're Sentinel restricting them, and you're forcing them to guard more for Antlion, forcing them to most likely PG the Vanguard, and forcing them to guard more attacks in general. So, it's a very helpful combo. And if you ride a Venom Stinger again, you can do this all over again. I'm not joking. All you need is one, all you need is this play, and then you can just keep looping this over and over and over again and your opponent can't stop you. It is, once you get the combo going, you will, you will most likely be in control for the rest of the game. It is like a wrecking ball that will not stop until everything in its path is destroyed. <laughs> that is how this deck works. It is very hard to stop. On By looking at it, you would think, ah, yeah, no, it's not that good. Nope, it's really good once you get the combo going. And then you get to keep cards in hand because you're most likely calling Nasty Smogs to the other back row circles after the combo slows down for a while and you lock down your opponent's units, which means you get to keep cards in hand for guarding. On to the gifts, since I've been talking about that combo for like the last five minutes or so. Protect one. Uh, the standard when placed, you discard a card and then one of your units can't be hit. I only suggest six gifts in total um, because you should never ride this. Like I said, if you have a choice, discard it. I do not care if... If it's in the situation where if you ride it, it will save you. There is no point to being on this because it will hurt you more than help you. Just discard this and get it over with. You're either going to ride Antlion, which isn't the worst thing in the world, or ride Venom Stinger, which is the best thing in the world. And then Protect 2, where when it's acquired, you put it on the circle, and then a unit on it gets plus 5k power and plus 10k show when it intercepts. Basically, here's how you're supposed to play this. When you get to grade one, you normally ride this thing. You can call it down this if you want, or this to get searches out. Then you most likely end your turn. You get to grade two. Do not ride this unless you have no choice. Ride either this or this. Uh, maybe call one of these two for an attack or two. Attack, then intercept during your opponent's next turn with one of them. Ride this, and then get the combo going. It's that simple. It's The deck basically plays itself. It's very fun. And it's just a nice little thing to do to your opponent that they will never expect. You thought that this grade three was only capable of being a finisher? Guess what? You're wrong. It's capable of doing a lot more, apparently being part of a really fun to spam combo. And then the quick shield, where it just gives plus 5k power to a unit, which I still wonder why it's called shield when it technically gives power instead of shield. Either way, that was the deck. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um... This deck is actually very fun to play. I do suggest picking it up. It can be, it's very balanced. It can do a lot of things at grade three. It can pull resources from different places. And there will never be a time where your opponent stops you from doing things or be able to stop you from doing things unless they kill your constant flow of attacks, which honestly is going to cost them more resources than it's worth. 
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and donate to the Patreon. See you on the next one. Don't forget to stand up your vanguards.